Hi Pisces, this is a reading called Can This Relationship Be Healed? And it is specifically for people who are in love relationships that are struggling. Maybe there has been infidelity or something else that has driven a wedge between both parties or you are estranged from this person. This is not meant to be for people who are experiencing physical or emotional abuse, those types of situations require a lot much more than simply getting back together. You, you know, there, there's a lot going on in those situations between both people, not just the person who's perpetrating the abuse, but the person who's tolerating it. So this is more for situations that are just like, incompatibility issues and even when it comes to affairs I know that there will be some people who will object to me saying that you can get over an affair but some long-term couples have experienced infidelity in their relationship and they have gotten over it in certain instances it's not going to be in every instance because all situations are different and um, some people have sex addictions and they are not capable of changing because the compulsion is so strong until they are really, really willing to do that shadow work. And there are other cases where the person may be doing it in order to control his partner or her partner and kind of put them in a position of, of feeling bad about themselves. So it's almost like an abuse, an abusive tendency. But in some cases, it really does involve the dynamics of the relationship or the fact that, you know, it could be situational. There's, there's just too many things that can go on. But the other thing that I want to make clear is that if you are the one who is being triggered by somebody where you feel like you're being abusive to them, maybe it's just verbally, but it still can be a very bad thing because they rub you the wrong way, then that's something that you have to ask yourself. Why do you want to be with this person? Why do you think that you're in love with this person if you have such a volatile relationship? And I think it's detrimental, this idea of twin flames, because too often... People think that if the relationship is full of drama, it's automatically, you know, two people that are twin flames. And my, my uh, go-to answer for that one is, then I don't want a twin flame because I don't want that kind of negativity in my life. To me, and I'm not a twin flame expert here, but um, to me, a twin flame situation might be that you're kept apart by circumstances or that you have a very passionate way of approaching life because you're meant to do something together, but that has to be kind of um, modified in some way, but not talking about constant fighting and, you know, a lot of disharmony on a regular basis. I don't think that's good for anybody, but that's just my opinion, obviously. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be doing a spread um, using my uh, typical, what do I call that one, <laughs> Morgan Greer deck, I, I forgot for a second. And I'm also going to be picking a card from the Crystal Visions Tarot, and this is going to be like shadow work stuff, because I found that those cards are a little bit, there's like a, um, a dark background in them. So I think they're perfect for kind of the more subconscious stuff. And even if it's in the upright position, we can look at the, the shadow work that needs to be done. So I'm just going to go ahead and shuffle this. I, I, I was kind of pausing because I was like, wait a second, I haven't comprised the spread like how am I going to do this but I kind of have an idea of what I can do it's not really reinventing the wheel here so just give me a second while I concentrate
Okay, this one jumped out. I'll have this as the advice. Okay. And then we're going to pick the card. This, is, this will be for you what you need to do. Some people commented that they liked the deck, and um, some people were not necessarily, I'm talking about this Crystal Visions deck. As I said, if you see the backgrounds of these cards, they're very bright, and they, you know, the images pop out. So that's what makes it so easy to kind of read and to uh, also to distinguish from other cards. They don't have the same background colors as this one does. But this one has a place, and I want to put it in there. Okay. Okay. So this is going to be the shadow work card. And so I like this type of reading. This is different from my typical love readings on YouTube. I will have December's you, uh, love reading sometime this month, probably around mid um November for December or maybe the third week in November. We'll see. So check back for that. That's my regular love reading. This is more of like a therapeutic version of it or like kind of more like advice oriented rather than just uh, predictive. Okay, so we're looking at a situation that already is, is taking place. So let's look at the heart of the matter and I did pick three cards. One of them is the Ten of Cups. Now this is the card of happy marriage. Okay, and um, it's interesting because we have here the card of karma. <laughs> the chickens coming home to roost kind of thing. So it makes it seem that I, I really got a feeling of someone who was cheating and this is breaking up a marriage now it could be that one party saw the relationship as happy and they were oblivious okay maybe that's you Pisces maybe you were in a little bubble thinking you had the perfect marriage and meanwhile this person was cheating on you and we see here the, the hermit. The hermit, uh, this was something I was going to bring up because for some people, it could be that that person felt alone, that that person really didn't feel like you, that they were connected to you. And I hesitated to say this because then I get these comments of blaming the victim. Let's say you had a job that you were very, like a career that was very, you know, all-consuming. And you weren't available as much as you typically were at the beginning of the relationship. And the other person felt alone, felt neglected. And that's why they sought out the company of somebody else. Um, that does happen. And since most of the people listening to this are women or watching this are women, it's something that men do tend to do. Um, it's not kind of uh, making excuses for infidelity, but for saying that it's not necessarily that easy sometimes for certain men to just come out and say, I feel neglected. So it's, e it's almost easier to, to seek that out than to just come out and say it, or they may not even be able to label it within themselves. I'm not saying all men. I'm saying certain men that tend to be a little bit to themselves. Like the, the Hermit card, and that could apply to you, Pisces. Maybe you felt like maybe you're a, a somebody who, who cheated on your partner because you felt that you were all alone. And maybe you didn't mean it, and you could be a woman too and doing the same thing. Um, you may have tried to tell your partner your feelings, and you didn't feel like you received respect for that. And so instead of getting out of the relationship, it was easier to just have an affair. Um, some people do this because of a, I don't know if you would call it 
it's almost like they they don't like to take direct action. And it, 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 I'm not saying it's a passive aggressive kind of a thing because they really may be trying to get their needs met, but it still is not effective because it doesn't address the problem. And it just kind of prolongs the agony in a way. Um, and especially if the person that you're having an affair with isn't necessarily somebody that you could see yourself being with for the long haul. As a matter of fact, I'm going to bring out this shadow teaching because um, the Four of Pentacles is about looking at relationships from the perspective of how do they, how will they stand the test of time? Pentacles relates to earth. The number four relates to structure. So we think of I don't know if the number four connects to Saturn, but I could totally see if it would. This idea of having a foundation below your feet, not having some kind of fly-by-night situation. Um, and with Pisces, the fantasies are oftentimes uh, on fire where you, if somebody can come to you, and I did not get the Knight of Cups, but some kind of romantic figure comes into your life and sweeps you off your feet, it really doesn't matter if you're married because the fantasy is more important than the reality to you. And I'm broad brushing. I'm sure some of you would resist somebody's advances that way. But some people would get lost in the, in the fantasy of it because it's so intoxicating okay your your ruler neptune is about intoxication is about sometimes about addiction but that intoxication is that that generate generator of fantasies of illusion but also of this uh, unreality and it can it can take you away from the dull <laughs> everyday world and um and yet the, the world is still waiting for you, and all of those things don't go away. And, you know, with the judgment card, we're looking at what you sow, so shall you reap. So you may be able to, and this also applies to your partner, a person can possibly get away with something for a while, but eventually it catches up to them in some way. It's not a punishment, it's just cause and effect. Okay, and um, this goes for any kind of a habit, too. I mean, you might be able to get away with doing all sorts of things, and then eventually you have to look at what you're doing. And um, if the person, even if the, the other person never, quote unquote, finds out what you're up to, the relationship is deteriorating in the meantime. You may be consumed with guilt if you're the one cheating. But whatever's happening, it's happening. Now let's look at this spiritual context of this um, problem within the relationship. It's the Five of Cups. This is a card of grief. Okay. Now, mourning the loss of something. If, for instance, somebody cheated on you and they came clean and you still can't get over it, it's because you still ha are having a hard time coping with the betrayal or whatever it is that bothers you the most about it. Some people are not necessarily all that, you know, hung up on this, on, on the sexual part of it, but it's more of the, the fact that the person lied to them, that they deceived them. That's what really bothers them. Or the fact that some people, it is the fact that they were with somebody else. And they can't, they can't seem to get over that. By the way, I'm not telling you that you have to get over that. But you, if you're in another world where you're in love with somebody that betrayed you, then something has to give. Either you have to find a way to understand what, what happened. And that would take a lot of dialogue. If the other person doesn't want to talk about it and they just want you to forget about it, then that's not going to work. In order for you to grieve something properly, you have to know what it is that they did. And then maybe you can get over it easier. 
You know, if somebody said to you, well, I really felt like you didn't love me because after you gave birth to our, our child, you didn't want to have sex with me and I felt undesirable. If, if a partner can say that, um, that can make it easier for you to understand. Oh, wow. But you might still be mad and say, well, you know, is that all you think about? Is that, you know what I'm saying? So there, there can still be things that need to be kind of like talked about, but at least you have some kind of understanding that it's not because there's something wrong with you, that you're undesirable and all these things. Uh, so these, these kind of things, but the, the five of cups could be a loss that happened long ago. You may find this situation, Pisces, to be par for the course. You may not be that surprised at all, all that this occurred because maybe it's happened to you over and over again where you have been cheated on. And if so, you need to ask yourself, what is the pattern that keeps getting activated here? Again, some people are gonna say, that's blaming the victim. What if there are no victims? You know, there's a saying, there are no victims, only volunteers. Um, volunteers is an interesting noun in this case because it could mean that we are choosing to be in those positions for a reason. Maybe we can't understand it at, this, at our current level of consciousness. But rather than just automatically being eager to feel like a victim, Maybe we can bring it out a bit and see that maybe in the grander scheme of things, there is a reason for all of this. And then we can stop that pattern if that's something that we want. And sometimes it could be that, let's say that you had a parent who died when you were very young. So you've been afraid of abandonment. Well, what is the typical thing that people who are afraid of abandonment do? They tend to smother their partner in some way. They tend to be very clingy. They tend to be, you know, it's, it can be very obnoxious to be with somebody who doesn't let the other person breathe because of their insecurities, because of their, just their, their fear that that person is going to go away. And they end up creating the very scenario that they're terrified of. And so um, that kind of thing can be, overcome. Sometimes I think just knowing it and going, that's what's happening to me. Then you can, it's like the karma can just like burst into flames and obliterate. That's how I think it works. I really believe that, but it's not that easy to get to that point because there's a layers of denial. Sometimes there's all kinds of things that could be swirling around. Advice. Five of swords, this is about, depending on who you are in this picture, if you're the one that is committing the treachery, sometimes this is, because I was saying about here that I could see somebody who, there are people out there who enjoy um, being the other, I'll just say the other woman because that is the phrase that is used acknowledging that it could be the other man, okay? But just saying the other woman um, because it gives them an ego boost. This is a card of empty victory, of winning, in air quotes, but losing at the same time. So you may be playing these ego games because it makes you feel desirable, but it's really, you know, it's really a bad situation. Um, if you are somebody who feels like you're the one that is being lied to and, and cheated on. This card could be about acknowledging that, not making excuses, not creating a false narrative, but saying this person and saying, is this person like morally bereft? Do they have problems with their integrity or are there other issues? And you, only you can decide that based on the evidence of the relationship as a whole. And you know, sometimes good people lie. It's not that if you lie, you're the scum of the earth. But if somebody has a habit of being untruthful, that is not going to be good for a relationship in the long haul. So not allowing yourself, that's, that's the other thing too, not allowing yourself 
to be the victim in that situation and playing dumb and acting like you're, you're totally unaware of what's happening when you know down inside that the person's cheating on you. Because um, that can happen too, being in denial. But being in denial, sometimes people in denial really know what's going on. But they will tell other people uh, this false narrative. While deep inside of themselves they know the truth. The outcome is the, the nine of um, wands, which is actually a card of strength. This is a card of bolstering up your defenses and being aware if you're somebody who has um, been separated from a partner this could mean that this person is going to come back into your life and we do have in uh, December a mercury retrograde so sometimes people will contact uh, old flames and people from their past during a mercury retrograde you know it's all about communication and, and the retrograde aspect of it is going back over old territory. So be prepared. Now, again, this doesn't mean that in all cases you have to not be with this person. Maybe in some cases you just need a very strong boundary. Maybe, you, you know, um, Neptune and the 12th house, what Pisces is all about, is connected to, is about not having boundaries. Everything is just one. Everything is all um, foggy and, and, and dissolved, okay? And sometimes when you're dealing, that's great for your spiritual life, okay? And it's great for how you consider um, the rest of your um, soul family, okay? But when you're talking about relationships, not just romantic ones, but any type of relationship, employer, employee, friendships, if you allow yourself to be a doormat that is not having proper boundaries, you have to be able to say no, you have to be able to know and without and, and say no without having any kind of confusion or guilt. And you also have to be able to see when somebody is very clearly um, being disrespectful to you, okay? So that kind of thing is very important. And um, once you do that, you weed out a lot of uh, the confusion. And I think you also, um, there's a saying, you teach people how to treat you by what you're willing to accept. When you have boundaries it, and, and clear, consistent boundaries, you let people know what you're willing to tolerate and what you're not willing to tolerate, and then they will be less likely to pull um, some crap on you that is disrespectful to you, okay? All right, Pisces. Well, I hope you enjoyed this, and if you'd like a private love reading, um, I'm offering in the month of November and December 20% off all my love readings with the coupon code Jupiter. So you can just type it in. And um, in any case, I hope you have a great rest of 2017. Take care of yourselves. Bye.